I immediately go, this student wants to be a doctor because mommy's a doctor and that's not good enough. I'm going to move on. Application Renovation, season three. How are you doing today? I am good. How are you? I am wonderful. I'm excited to chat with you about your application. As an international applicant, we'll have uh, back-to-back international applicants here on Application Renovation, which will make it interesting to kind of compare and contrast. Talk to me about the application cycle, how it went, how it kind of deviated potentially from your expectations. What are you, what are you thinking there? Um, so as we know, last year was, you know, midst of COVID, a lot of students were struggling to even give the MCAT. I remember um, it was such a struggle to book a test even um, for the MCAT. And my first score was not satisfactory. So I knew I had to um, take the second one. Um, My initial test date was May, but then it got pushed back to end of June. And I ended up submitting my primaries and secondaries. Everything was in and complete by August 5th to all the schools. Okay, which isn't terrible. That's, uh, That's basically when medical schools are kind of ramping up to start looking at the next application cycle anyway. So timing wise, it doesn't sound terrible. Uh, this is first application cycle. Yep. Okay. Why? Uh, because I, I know you've done your master's. Why didn't you apply earlier? Um, I didn't apply the year before because I, I just wanted to finish my master's. My GPA would be boosted that way. Um, so that's why that was one of the reasons. And then the second reason was actually, I tried to take the MCAT in 2019. It went terribly. I went to the, that was the first time I was taking it. I went there. I had a major panic attack in the testing center. Like I had to be escorted out. It was a mess. Oh no! And I missed the, like, you know, the time to apply because it was like in June or something. So I was like, yeah, I can't apply this year. I want to focus on that for two seconds because it may help someone. Is test anxiety a normal thing for you or was that something new to you? It is very, very normal after having given so many exams, both in undergrad and grad school. um, It is normal, completely okay, Um, especially for the MCAT. They play they place so much weight on it that it's only natural to feel that anxious. Yeah. But I would say that if you go in with the correct mindset, with the calm mind, then you can actually end up, you will actually end up doing much better than you expect, which happened in June, 2020, as compared to um, January, 2020. Okay. All right. You ready to look at your application? Yeah, I think so. I think so. That's a good answer. (laughs) I don't know. I'm not Uh, sure. um, All right. So um, uh, right off the bat, I'd love just pointing out June 5th submission date. 20 days later, you were verified, which is awesome. And then at least 2020, these applications didn't go out to schools until July 10th anyway. So um, your application was verified, ready to rock for a while. Uh, You are an international applicant, and so that makes things a little bit more complicated. Mm -hmm. Um, You have really no other big things here on uh, your application in terms of misdemeanors and institutional actions, which is great. Uh, Makes things easy. You, uh, so to kind of compare and contrast, our last application renovation student was an international applicant as well Mm -hmm. and she marked herself disadvantaged as an immigrant you did not was there any question of whether you should mark yourself disadvantaged here yeah there was a question i done some research on it but coming from and like from place like dubai and above um you know average income family they said that you shouldn't so I didn't want to mark myself as disadvantaged and take it, I don't know, away from people who actually are disadvantaged. <laughs> okay. So so, so first of all, you marking yourself disadvantaged doesn't take away from anyone else. So let me let me put out the, let me put that out there for everyone. Um, and then second of all, 
your parents' status, your your dad, obviously, uh, actually your mom here, um, that's weird. Usually male comes first on here or not. I forget. Anyway, um, your mom being marked as a physician, obviously you assume some level of financial status and stability, et cetera. Like those are really big assumptions. I'm sure we could go find plenty of students whose parents are physicians whose home life is horrible and abusive and, and whatever else. So um, just because you're of your parents' status doesn't mean you should or shouldn't mark disadvantage. So um, there's, there's nothing there. So I don't want anyone to go, oh, you shouldn't mark disadvantage because. Uh, in, my, in my new book, The Pre-Med Playbook Guide to the Medical School Application Process, I do have a disadvantaged essay section or chapter. I forget if it's its own chapter or not. Um, I, sh I should know. I wrote the book. Um, but there, there's basically what I say in there is everyone has the ability to mark yes for disadvantage. The biggest question that you need to ask yourself is why. Why would you mark yourself disadvantaged? And so um, in your case, you didn't think so or you were told not to, and that's okay. All right. And we get to grades. And we start off pretty rough with uh, B's and C's freshman year. Mm -hmm. Some more B's. And you have your first A here freshman year in intro to philosophy. <laughs> um, yeah. And so what went on with grades freshman year? Um, I studied in a British school all my life. The way of the way they approach questions, the way of studying is completely different from an American curriculum. Yeah. That mixed with traveling like 6,000 miles away for, my, for the first time ever, you know, being away from family, yeah. um, having really bad separation anxiety, um, and just freshman year in general, like BU is hard and their freshman classes are even harder. They're called weed out classes. So all of that combined, I wasn't able to, it was more like I didn't know how to study. I was studying, but I just wasn't focusing yep. on the correct things. I wasn't focusing on understanding. I was only memorizing for one. So okay. that why. So potentially that alone could have been your disadvantaged essay if you wanted to mark yourself as disadvantaged to say, hey, look, I being away, far away from from <laughs> uh, my parents, learning a new culture, learning uh, language typically isn't an issue. Um, uh, for India or Dubai, uh, English is, is usually very common. Um, mm. but, but just new culture, new educational system, I think those potentially could be valid things for a disadvantaged essay, depending on how you talk about it. So, um, and then you can see sophomore year, you kind of rebooted and you have mostly A's moving forward, which is great. Um, junior year, uh, B, um, senior year, a couple more B's, but mostly A's, which is awesome. And then you can see some graduate classes um, and mostly A's, some a uh, couple B's in your graduate program. And so your undergraduate program being uh, physiology and medical science for a graduate program, obviously freshman year that that stung. And then you have a nice upward trend um, uh, moving forward with your three, five, eight, three, six, eight, and then three, five, you, you fell off a little bit senior year. What happened there? Um, I, I, nothing particularly, the courses were kind of hard. I thought, um, some of them, especially there was a change in administration at BU for some of the courses. Yeah. So I would just say it's probably because of that. Okay. Um, so looking here, senior year, it's probably these two, unfortunately, B pluses. Yeah. Um, and the A minuses, maybe a little bit, but yeah. When you, when you look at this, you go, oh, those are good grades. And then it's like three, five. You're like, darn it. <laughs> yeah. It's so That's frustrating. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so you can see three, four, one cumulative undergrad and then three, six, five graduate. Talk about your graduate GPA. Why isn't that a four Oh? Um, first of all, I thought actually my cumulative undergrad was 3.55. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at your science. Oh, okay. Okay. 
Um, my graduate GPA was not 4.0 because I, I mean, MAMS, which is Masters in Medical Science at BU School of Medicine, is really, really hard. It's um, is it a special master's program? Yeah, the special master's okay. program. Okay. Yeah, it's the you know the same course that med students at BU take, except that we're graded on an A B C scale yeah. and they're graded on pass and fail. Okay. So um, it was not a 4.0 because, I mean, I did my best and that yeah. was so that, what I So that's did. pretty good uh, it, that it's an SMP. You're taking classes with the medical students. Um, did you get an interview at BU? No. Why I was very not? disappointed. Um, I actually reached out to BU's administration, and unfortunately, they said that my application did not, you know, rise to the top uh, of the competitive pool. Um, they said they couldn't point out any, like, one factor that went wrong, just that BU is very competitive, <laughs> and they anticipated, like, this number, but they got so many more applications this COVID cycle. Yeah. So. Lot, lots of people rush their application because they're like, ooh, I don't have to take the MCAT. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, just didn't make yeah. sense. Um, okay. So you can see here, you, you mentioned earlier your MCAT score, obviously, to begin with, wasn't great. And then you did much, much better. So good job there. Um, now let's get into activity list. So, so stat wise, GPA is. is your, your undergraduate GPA is a little bit low science-wise. Um, your graduate GPA being an SMP is decent. Um, not amazing, but but really good being competitive SMP. Yeah. Oh, I also want to add that um, because I submitted my application in August and I graduated in September, my final graduate GPA was 3.73. Oh, great. Um, I emailed all the schools I applied to as soon as I got it to say that, hey, like this is the new GPA. And they said awesome. they added it to my application. So Awesome. Good job. Um, all right. So stat wise, you're competitive. You, you have very good stats. Um, your MCAT score is good. Uh, I think there's a lot of misconception around international students needing absolutely perfect stats. And it's just not true. Um, yeah. All right. So then we get to experiences. We have research lab. Lots of hours. Um, <laughs> talk about that. So this is over the course of one year. This is basically a full-time job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. It was a full-time job, yeah? Yep. Okay. Um, while you're going to school? Um, no, it was while I was studying for my MCAT. So the master's program is two years. The first year is courses, and then the second year is your thesis writing research year. And so so that was this, this research is basically part of your, your master's program. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Um, Okay. So yeah, you say that here your master's thesis, Um, and the the thing I highlighted here is you have this project enhanced my appreciation for biochemistry and allowed me to apply theoretical concept concepts practically, such as the pathway. Blah 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 blah. I'm like, okay, like what what's the point of saying that on an application? What what was your thinking behind adding that? Um, I guess. So I watched your application renovation videos and the activity section. Yeah. And I thought that, like you said, it's so hard when it's the non-meaningful experiences with just the 700 characteristic to like basically write um, what it is rather than um, tell a story about it, which is which I tried to do in the meaningful one. So I was actually just trying to explain what I did in okay. words. So I, I think you misinterpreted the, what I talk okay. about. So you can definitely tell a story in 700 characters. Uh, it is hard, but you should still try to do it. Um, and so the very basic, here's what I did, is not impactful at all and should be avoided at almost at all costs. And so okay. when I see this project enhance my appreciation bio, for biochemistry, great, go teach biochemistry, right? You don't need to be a doctor. Um, yeah. you love biochemistry so much. Why don't you marry it? Right. Stupid <laughs> middle, middle school joke. Um, and so it just doesn't help me understand who you are. Okay. Um, and then the, I am solely responsible for all experiments under this project, right? You're trying to brag here. You're like, Ooh, look at me. I'm look how special I am. 
Um, so it doesn't, doesn't help. Provost Scholarship for Masters in Medical Sciences. You have this one line here saying, I received this, right? You could have expanded on it. What did that mean to you? How did you get it? What was involved in applying for it? So a lot of missed opportunity potentially to oh, that's a good point. expand yeah. on that. You have some leadership here uh, for a couple months, organi organizer of memory in the living room, okay? Uh, so this project that you did, just trying to understand what it is. Uh, and then just the things that I highlighted again are the sales pitch aspect of, I understood the importance of staying calm in a stressful situation. Okay, great. Does that mean you should be a doctor? No. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I know that you're trying to tell me that you think being a doctor is stressful and you need to remain calm in stressful situations and therefore you're ready. All right, so just a very common mistake that, that students have. Um, again, the it improved my understanding of HIPAA laws and why implementing the Neuroberg code was so crucial. I'm like, um, okay, like what does HIPAA have to do with traveling to the Holocaust Memorial Museum and hearing stories from Holocaust survivors. Very, very confusing takeaway here. But it's the problem when you, you're you focused so much on selling skills and traits and understanding that things just don't make sense in the end. You're like, why is this important? It's not. So you got to be careful with that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, Research and lab again. So I, I said this on the last application renovation with an international student. Research is very common for international students. It's easy to get into because it's typically on campus where your visa gives you access to. Um, and so it's, it's harder to go off campus for clinical experiences and stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, and so I see that. Again, the, the takeaway here is missing right who are you I, that's what i want to know and you basically said it helped me understand the dire urgency for optimization of bedside technology through research and development great go into device manufacturing right go into industry you don't need to be a doctor to to be interested in that um and so i'm i'm i want to know who you are uh more research more lab Right? Who are you? You can see here, you, question mark. You worked on this project. The coding focused on teaching methods such as declarative or procedural knowledge. Great. Just all super basic information. Right? This head physiology tutor and learning assistant. Very basic resume of what you did here. Right? And then your most meaningful experience. You said, my confidence in my own understanding of physiological concepts improved as well as my public speaking skills right so you're selling skills again um so just yeah. things to avoid and then i'm very confused I, I highlighted an orange here to ask you why did you put this for instance i was initially unaware of the fact that acetylcholine worked differently on skeletal and cardiac muscles like what, uh i think i was trying, trying i think i was trying to make the previous sentence like i thought they wouldn't understand what i was trying to say maybe and that's why i wanted to give an example okay yeah but that's about it i'm not sure okay so the the previous sentence is tutoring also made me more aware of my own misconception than not knowing the answer to a student's question reflected poorly on me as a tutor oh yeah, I was answering that uh, my own made me more aware of my own misconception uh, part. What is, is what is the misconception? I was confused about that. Oh, that I that I didn't know that this part of acetylcholine actually is true. The statement is true. And that's why I know it better now because I've taught it rather than just like learning it myself. But what what's the misconception in general? Because you're, you're like, made me more aware of my own misconception that not knowing the answer to a student's question reflected poorly on me as a tutor. Is the misconception that it's okay to not know something? Or is the misconception that you should know everything? I, I'm not sure I understand what the misconception is. 
I think the misconception was that it's okay not to know everything. Okay. The first part of it. Yeah. So you thought as a tutor, I should know everything. And, yeah. and that was a misconception. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, yeah. So again, just the, the, the like focus here. on the story is just very weird. Like, obviously you don't know everything. I don't know everything. The doctors yeah. you're going to shadow don't know everything. The attendings in medical school don't know everything. Right? That's the whole point of life is to continue to learn. And so it's just a weird focus on, hey, like as a tutor, I learned that I don't have to know everything. And let me tell you this about this acetylcholine. I would have rather seen a story of an interaction with a student. Show me that interaction. Show me who you are as a person through that interaction. Right? And, and so just the, the focus on what you're talking about is just off. Got it. Okay. okay. Extracurricular activities, talking about ice skating and ice hockey. And then I just highlighted here the dates that you put in here. You have 916 to 1216 and then 117 to 517. Why did you separate those out as two different date spans? Uh, I think it's because I took a gap in between. Of like a week or two? So. Like winter break? Or something? Well, there's... I don't remember. <laughs> it's only, according to this, it could have been 1231 to 11, right? Then there's only like, yeah. oh, it's just the, the calendar changed. And so typically for these kinds of spans, I don't recommend breaking it up like that. Even okay. for this couple months span here, I wouldn't recommend it. And then you did the same thing here, the 12, 1217 to 118. I would have put this all as 916 to 518 and just added it as one. Okay. Um, it just looks weird. And then, so that's fine. Talking about ice skating. I would have loved to see just a lighthearted story about ice skating, but you're like, oh, I built on my acquired skills and continue to practice today. Yeah. Right? It's just, a, it's just very dry. Yeah. Um, community service volunteer for Boston healthcare for the homeless. And so this is a couple month, um, experience. That's a lot of hours for a couple months. Um, was this a full-time thing? Yep. It was over the summer full-time. Okay. All right. Uh, and then the, the, the story focused on here of, I was an activities coordinator who organized arts, crafts, and board game uh, competitions for the residents. And so there's two things going on here. Number one, you list this as medical clinical. This is the yeah. only medical clinical so far, and it's from four years ago from when you submit the application. And so that's that's the, the highlight of the dates is it's a long time ago, and it's your only clinical experience. Why is it your only clinical experience? Why is it so long ago? And then why do you focus on arts, crafts, and board games, and you're trying to tell me it's clinical experience? Um, yeah, I think I was focusing on the like I put it as clinical, but a part of it working at the podiatry clinic was the clinical and the rest were not clinical. Okay. So because it's all part of one experience, because I was at so many different branches of Boston Healthcare, that I guess I didn't know what to put as experience type. So you can split one experience in the multiple activities. Oh, and say, okay. I had this one experience, 100 hours was clinical experience and let me tell you about the clinical experience and 380 right to get your 480 380 hours were this kind of more volunteerish non-clinical stuff you can you can a thousand percent split activities for most students it's hard because you're limited at least on amcas for to, to 15 spots but that's what you potentially should have done um, so that this 480 hours isn't an overinflated number of hours of clinical experience that you have. Okay, because th the, the discussion of arts, crafts, and board games will call into question the whole activity. Yeah, I can see why. Okay. Okay. Um, and again, helping social workers, making important calls, again, not clinical experience. So you've got to be yeah. careful about that kind of stuff. And again, the sales pitch. I honed my communication and conflict resolution skills. You're focused on sales pitch. Mm -hmm. I know that to be a good doctor, you have to have good communication and conflict resolution skills. And I'm going to tell you that I have those things. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to know who you are, not who you 
think I want you to be. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then what the heck is spatial, spatially mismatched citizens? Um, it's like spatial inequality, right? Where there's like areas of low income and then high income areas. So that's what I noticed and learned about more in the Boston Healthcare for Homeless program. Okay. I've never heard that language before. That's what I assumed because you talked about yeah, fresh okay. groceries. So like I could picture like food deserts. Uh, yeah. But I've never um, heard that term spatial, spatially some, mismatched. There are some terms that I just want to say on a side note that I – say so differently that I realized after coming to the U.S. are just so different. Like uh, I say lift, right? Not elevator. Not elevator, yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> things like that. Yeah. Those, are, those are little things though. Right? Yeah. Spatially okay. mismatched. And I'm like, what is that? <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, I've mine. Yeah. When I, I went to, um, to to London and Paris over, over um, New Year's 2020, uh, right before the, the pandemic ended everything. And so I had to learn like Lyft and, and all the different languages, different Yeah, That was fun. <laughs> all right. Shadowing. So shadowing and clinical experience all from many years ago. And so the mm -hmm. biggest question right off the bat is if you say you want to be a doctor, why aren't you doing those things? And I, again, I understand yeah. from a international student perspective there are going to be limitations on what you can and can't do but the questions are still going to be there and i didn't mention early on and i'll scroll all the way back to the top your mom is a doctor right yeah we mentioned that your mom's a doctor already based on we were talking about the disadvantaged essay but the fact that your mom's a doctor is going to set off little red flags to the reviewers to go, uh-oh, let me make sure that this student super extra realizes what life as a doctor is like and not just wants to be a doctor like mommy. And Makes when sense. I, And when I go and look at your activities and see that your last clinical experience is 2016 and it's not really clinical experience and your last shadowing experience is 2016 – I immediately go, this student wants to be a doctor because mommy's a doctor and that's not good enough. I'm going to move on. No, you're right. I, I realized that. I was like, why is there a gap? After I submitted my application, it came to me. But you're 100% right. I should have done more yeah. shadowing. And clinical experience. And clinical, yeah. <laughs> uh, clinical experience being more important. Okay. And then tutoring here, again, the – just the sales pitch aspect of everything that you wrote about teaching made me realize how crucial it is to be patient with students as well as peers and that every individual has a unique way of comprehending material, right? Super basic understanding of what being a tutor is. Um, and then you trying to convert that into what your life will be like as a doctor. Yeah. Okay. Not needed. Honors, awards, recognitions, perfectly fine way to list that kind of stuff. And then you have some more shadowing here that you could have just added into the shadowing above. Okay. Instead of separate, um, separate activities. Some more medical clinical experience here. Volunteer medical tents for the marathon. And so, okay, there's, there's a little bit more recent. Not a ton of hours. Obviously, the marathon day is just one day. And uh, marathon Monday in Boston, which is a great day. Um, and so you are talking about, again, very basic, I underwent training in CPR and emergency aid to assist, blah, 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 blah. Right. I'm like 3000 annually injured. That's a lot. And then I was like, oh yeah, there's like 20,000 people that run in the marathon. Yeah. So that makes sense. Um, and then you, you try to tell a story here, which is great. Right. I, I remember a specific runner brought in a medical tent extreme hyperthermia, reduces body temperature, uh, an ice cold bath, blah, 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 right? So you tried to tell a story, which is great. I would have liked to see more focus on that story, more focus on that impact. And then the, the sales pitch, which you're like, okay, I told a little bit of story. Now let me get into the sales pitch. But this opportunity helped me realize the true value of efficiency, speed, and the ability to think on one's feet. I'm like, oh, God, like, it's I don't need good. that. Yeah. Right? Don't right. do that. Don't do that. Um, 
And then treasurer and fundraising chair, so good impact through numbers, right? Six thousand dollars to contribute to research. You raised two to three thousand um, dollars, so good, good job there. Um, leadership again, just a weird way to list all the leadership. Potentially could have just put that as one. Um, again, good impact through numbers: fifteen thousand, forty-five underprivileged families, a plus blood donations. Um, so good job. And then we get to the personal statement. And the personal statement does not help you at all, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm not proud of I wasn't proud of it even when I submitted it, but I don't know what to do. So, so let's talk about that real quick because I, I want to understand the thought process that goes into why submit a personal statement you're not proud of. I have, I actually have no answer for that because I thought it's the best I could do. I was really struggling with answering the why medicine question, which is, you know, I was like trying to stand out and be unique, but at the same time, like not even directly answering the question. So I just didn't know um, what to do. And I was like, this is the best I can do. So yeah. How did you get help on your personal statement? Who helped you with your personal statement? Um, I reached out to a bunch of um, already in school medical students. So they about like, I'd say like five or six of them read it, some DO and some MD. Okay. That's, yeah. So I believe that just because someone is in medical school, just because someone is a doctor, does not mean that they can provide feedback on a personal statement. Right. They may have gotten into medical school in spite of their personal statement. They may have had a horrible personal statement, but their stats and their secondary essays and their activities help them. And so now they're giving you feedback on your personal statement based on the same horrible feedback that they got on their personal statement. And so it's easy and it's definitely cheaper, uh, but there are risks involved with, with getting feedback from those types of people. So your pre-med advisors or private advisors are typically going to be better places for feedback. Okay. okay. And you got to be careful soliciting too much feedback. So sending it to five different people, you got five different pieces of advice and you're like, well, which one do I follow? And that's where uh, Dr. Rivera, the director of admissions, Dean of admissions at NYU has has called personal statements a village statement because so many people are giving input into what should be your story. Yeah. Okay. It was five. It was five med students and then like five of my friends. So you know, total is like ten to twelve people. Yeah, that's a lot of people. Yeah. All right. So let's look at this. So you walk into a physiology lab, spotted a baggy eyed, tear stained, something uh, hunched over the intimidating Wiggers diagram, whatever that is. Uh, magnified in all its glory and vendor humans physiology. I'm like, what are we talking about? As her tutor, and I'm like, oh, we're talking about, why are we talking about tutoring in a personal statement? So right off the bat, I'm like, what's going on here? All right, I could explain the diagram back to me, or she could explain the diagram back to me in her own words. She was able to reason out. Why are we talking about this student? I want to know who you are and why you want to be a doctor. Why did you write about this in your personal statement? I think I connected with tutoring most. And I think I was trying to show that I want to, like, if you can be a, I don't know, actually, if you can be a good, <laughs> well, not that you can be a good doctor also, but I was trying to focus. I think I was trying to connect the two because that was my most like meaningful um, okay. experience. So, yeah. And that's the problem, right? Yeah. The, at, at its core, the problem is you don't have enough clinical experience because you're trying to make all these connections to medicine that, number one, you don't need to do, period. Even if you have tons of clinical experience, you don't need to make connections to medicine. You just need to talk about why you want to be a doctor. But number two, you, you don't have the experiences, so you're relying on other things and you're, you're trying to get a little bit too fancy. And so your reflection here is moments like these have instilled in me a love for teaching that has contributed to my love for medicine. Yeah. So. Teaching and medicine do not go hand in hand. Yes, as a physician, you need to teach your patients. And if you're in an academic center, you're teaching residents and medical students. 
but just because you love teaching doesn't mean you should be a doctor, which yeah. is basically what you're saying here. <clears throat> and then through tutoring, I've learned that solutions, even in medicine, are not one size fits all. And so right off the bat, I understand where you're going with your personal statement. You're going, hey, I'm a teacher. I should be a doctor. I understand what medicine's all about. Just, just accept me already and give me my diploma. <laughs> right? Yeah. And so very, very common mistakes. My ability to identify the, the student's needs not only nurtured my love for teaching. Again, my love for teaching. You just said you have a love for teaching. Now you're saying a love for teaching. Also caused me to realize that teaching is not restricted to one career. Well, of course not. It doesn't mean you should be a doctor. As a physician, I aim to use this communication style to educate my patients and ensure that they grasp blah, 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 blah. Right? So your whole beginning essay is, I love teaching. I should be a doctor. Yeah. Okay. Experiences with my students also taught me to view the human body as a mosaic of principles rather than as several isolated systems. I have no idea what that means. Sounds super fancy, but doesn't mean you should be a doctor. I have always been an inquisitive person. Oh, great. Here we go. I love to learn. <laughs> right? <laughs> I love to learn cliche. My curiosity with compassion Right? Oh, I'm a compassionate person, therefore I should be a doctor. Right? So just super, super, super common mistakes on a personal statement. I want to know why you want to be a doctor. And with your mom being a physician, it makes it that much more important that you understand why you want to be a doctor, not just because mommy's a doctor. Stress is a natural part of life, demonstrated a few interventions, such as specific meditation. Right? You're basically like, look, I'm already taking care of patients. Just accept me already. Yeah. Okay. Choosing to study a career in medicine is not a decision I've taken lightly. Mm, okay. I don't know why that's important. Nobody really does that lightly. So your personal statement is not good. Um, not good. Not good. Okay. So why do you want to be a doctor? And I think part of the reason it's not good is because you don't have clinical experience. Yeah. Why you want to be a doctor should be founded in, right? The foundation is your experiences being in and around patients. And yes, your mom being a physician is probably a key part, right? If you've read my book, The Seed of Your Exposure to Healthcare, your mom being a physician is potentially that seed. You may have some other experiences that you, you think are more important to talk about as a seed. But now you need your own experiences interacting with patients to reflect on, to tell the story of. For international student, you have lots of public schools on here, which if you did your research and you thought you had a chance at those public schools, great. Um, but just yeah. makes it harder. Yeah, I think like MSAR just said that these are the schools that international students can apply to. And that's like 25 schools in the U.S. So. Yeah. So what, yeah. what I want you to do on the MSAR is not just use the filter of accepts international students, but actually dive into each school and look at the table where they show in-state, out-of-state, international applicants, interviews, and acceptances or, or actual matriculants. They, unfortunately, they don't, they don't show acceptances, but they show matriculants. Just because yeah. the school says they accept international students doesn't mean that they actually accept international students. Yeah, I did. I did. Uh, we did make a note of that. Uh, we are like a little group of international students who are trying to get into med school and we have like an ongoing document where we post it. But then I guess it just like reduces your um, school list even more. Right. Just like 10 or 15 then. Yeah. But if those are the schools that are truly accepting international students, why add 10 more schools just to have a bigger list? It makes you feel better. But at the end of the day, those are wasted applications. So questions. Um, I think everything was super helpful, um, especially with the personal statement part. I did try to put like, you know, the one story in there with the or the two stories, but one was about teaching. The other was clinical about a patient, but maybe that was just like not reflective throughout the personal statement. I see that now. Yeah. Well, um, good luck. Hopefully with a better personal statement, some better extracurricular descriptions, mm -hmm. some more experience, clinical experiences. Are you getting clinical experience now? Well, 
I mean, I'm attending your e-shadowing all the time, but other than that, it's been really hard to get um, clinical inpatient experience. Yeah. So for, um, for you, I would not apply this coming cycle. Yeah, I'm not going to. Good. You need to get clinical experience now. Find a scribe job. Find a medical assistant job. Find something that will allow you to work. And, and it, from what I understand potentially with visas is, is as long as it's kind of related to your future career aspirations or your educational training that you can, you can get a job in that field. So you should be good with finding something in healthcare, which will be clinical experience. You just need to go get it. All right. All right. Thank you so much. This has been awesome. You are welcome. Good luck and keep us updated. Thank you. Bye. Bye.